It is not quite the trade deadline, but a couple AI trades have gone down, and they are a couple big ones, so we are going to go over those. The first one being Ender Inciarte has gone to the Pittsburgh Pirates in return for Starling Marte and Nick Kingham going to the Atlanta Braves. It's worth noting that both of these teams are last place in their divisions, respectively, the, AL, the NL East and the NL Central. Marte is on the last year of his deal, so it's not like a swap for one contract for the other, while Nick Kingham is, of course, I believe he has like a couple years of team control. I'm not sure about that. But Ender Inciarte is on a long-term deal, so I guess the Pirates just really wanted Ender Inciarte, and uh, they went out and got their guy to hopefully help their team next season, I guess, and seasons ahead. While the Toronto Blue Jays just continue to trade away literally everybody. Randall Gritchick is going back to the National League Central with the Cubs now as the Jays get three prospects in return for him. And they also went and traded Bo Bichette. Last season, they traded Vladimir Guerrero Jr. at the trade deadline in division to the Tampa Bay Rays. This year, they are trading Bo Bichette to the National League Central to help the Reds uh, become even more of a stacked team and even more of a stacked division. The Blue Jays did get a pretty good prospect in return for this as Mariano Cuevas is actually a very good pitcher. But still, it doesn't really make sense for them to trade Bo Bichette. I honestly think the AI in this game just sort of looks at their roster and goes, we suck, we're not winning currently, let's trade our best overall players for prospects. And they don't actually look, it doesn't actually factor into how much team control those players have. And if you look at the Blue Jays roster currently, their best overall players are 280 overalls in Bill Cooley, their closer, and Devin Travis, their second baseman, while that Mariano Cuevos guy I was talking about is actually a 78 overall B potential 20 year old. So he was one of the prospects back in the in the Bichette trade. So obviously they were going to get something for Bo Bichette because he has an A potential, like mid-80s overall. And now we move on to an interleague game against the Rays here at Tropicana Field, one of the worst ballparks in all of baseball. Yanni Chirinos getting the start for the Rays in the throwback unis with the green sleeves. And then opposing him will be Hinjin Ryu, also rocking the throwback orange tops for the Giants. Take a look at their lineup, 1-2-9, and of course the opposing Rays lineup, 1-9 as well. Start things off top half of the first, Elliot Ramos is going to kick off the game with a little slap single through the right side of the infield, so he's on first base, brings up the king of the first inning home run, Jock Peterson, and did he hit another one? Well, does a bear shit in the woods? Of course he did! A two-run shot, a monster two-run shot for Jock Peterson, and it's a 2-0 lead here to start off the game for the Giants. They were not done, however, in that inning as Aaron Altair comes up, who has been great against righties, horrible against lefties. Well, luckily, Yanni Chirinos is a righty, and Altair powers this one at the left center field. That just barely scrapes over the wall, but it does count. A 3-0 lead for the Giants here in the first inning. On to the top of the second now, Joey Bart at the dish, and he's also going Yabo. A solo shot for Bart, and it's now a 4-0 lead for the Giants as the bats have exploded early on for this San Francisco ball club. We now move on to the bottom of the second where Hin Jin Ru goes to work. One out in the inning gets Willie Adames to pop up to the first baseman Turner, and then after that it would be Nicky Delmonico who is going to do the same thing, but this one's at the plate to the catcher Joey Bart for the third out. On to the bottom of the third now where Mike Zanino hits a line drive to left field, Jock Peterson ranging back with all his extension, makes the play, nice play by Jock and left. On to the top of the fifth now where Javi Baez is at the plate, he hits a ball into the right center field gap, that's going to get down. For a double, Baez in scoring position now with one out. Yanni Chirinos, not the day he wanted to have, as that would end his day. Hunter Wood then comes out of the pen for Tampa Bay with a runner on second base and two outs. It's Gilberto Fuentes hitting a ball into left center field. That's going to score Baez from second base. It's now a 5-0 lead. As Ryu's back on the hill in the bottom of the sixth, saws off Philip Irvin for the first out. After that, it's Avicel Garcia, who's going to pop one up into shallow center field. All tears camped under that. And then for the third and final out, it would be Mike Zanino going down swinging on the curveball. On to the bottom of the seventh now, it's Daniel Robertson 
chasing the high fastball. And then for the third out, it's Vladdy Guerrero popping one up into left field. Can of corn for Jock Peterson in left. We move things on to the eighth inning now, where a no-hitter is still going for, Ty for Hinjin Ryu until Tyler Austin, the former giant, breaks things up as he took it into the set, into the eighth, but he could not get it through the eighth as Austin breaks up the no-hitter, and then with one out, it would be Nicky Delmonico hitting a ball into the left center field gap. That's going to drive in Austin, and the shutout is now no longer a thing as Rio would come out of the game. Alvarado now comes on in the ninth for the Rays. Stort Fairchild comes on to face the lefty, and he continues to mash lefties. A laser line drive home run over the left field fence. Stort Fairchild, the man is just insane against lefties, makes the 6-1 game. Maranza then comes on in the bottom of the ninth. With one out, he walks Joey Wendell, and it was a bit of a shaky appearance for Maranza. As that after that, it's a wild pitch gets away from Bart. Runner moves at the second base. Vladdy at the plate now. He draws himself a walk. So it's first and second, two outs. Brings up Tyler Austin, and he connects on a pitch that sends it into the left field seats. He's got a double and a three-run shot on the day. It's now a two-run game. So the Giants now bring on Rysel Iglesias to get out of this inning, this disaster inning as he would then give up a double to Willie Adames. That gets down in the left center field gap, so he's on second. The tying run is now at the plate in Nicky Delmonico, but he's going to do nothing as he goes down looking on the 97-mile-an-hour fastball. Iglesias gets the save as the Giants do sneak away with the victory as they escape the disaster ninth inning with a 6-4 win over the Rays here in interleague play. Hinjin Ru does get player of the game honors. He only gave up two hits on the day. Both of those came in the eighth inning. He had seven no-hit innings, struck out six, only gave up one run, walked nobody. Jock Peterson's only hit was the first inning two-run shot. Stuart Fairchild had a pinch hit home run. Joey Bart had a homer as well as Aaron Altair. We have arrived at the trade deadline as the Giants are on an absolute tear as of late. They have come out of the gates swinging here in the second half as they have won 12 of the 13 games they have played since the All-Star break. And because of that, they are now in first place in the National League West, and they are here to make moves at the deadline. So the Giants have gone out and traded for Robbie Ray, an in-division trade at the deadline. The Giants get the left-hander Robbie Ray, while the D-backs get Franklin Barreto, infielder, infielder prospect Jordan Groshans, and then outfielder Andrew McCutcheon. So Arizona has been incredibly bad this season. They obviously do not need Robbie Ray. He has been insane all of the years of this franchise at the strikeouts, and this season in particular even more so as he leads the National League with strikeouts so far. He's also ninth in earned run average while fourth in war. Also, it is worth noting that Robbie Ray is not, I repeat, he is not a rental. He is signed through this year and next year at $12.6 million, while the players that the D-backs got in return are Franklin Barreto, who still has the potential to be a solid player at the Major League level. He will be getting vastly more playing time for the D-backs than he would ever for us. Well, Jordan Grosshans has been great this season, has really shown that he could possibly be a pretty good player. He's 22 years old, and he's a B potential, so he's still got some, he's got some pretty good value. And Andrew McCutcheon is in the deal just to make the money work. Well, we also went out and made another trade for Devin Travis of the Toronto Blue Jays. I figured, hey, the Jays are trading away everybody. We want to go out and get a bat. So we went out and got Devin Travis, who is, is a rental. He is in the last year of his deal. He is a great contact hitter. He has some pop. He's pretty good defensively, and the plan for him is, even though he's a second baseman who's only played second base in the big leagues, the plan for him is to start at third base for us. Now, I know that's kind of unorthodox, but not really. I'm sure if he really needed to, he could play third base. And I mean, just last season in real life, the Milwaukee Brewers traded for Mike Moustakis, and he had never played second base before, and they decided to play him at second base. So we're doing a similar thing with Devin Travis and Steven Duggar, the, play the player going to Toronto for him, 
He still has a ton of team control, he's an A potential outfielder, still definitely has the potential to be a solid player, it's just he's never going to get consistent playing time with the Giants, so he is now going to the Jays, who could use all the potentially great players that they can get their hands on. And since we have made some moves, traded away some Major League players, we have some roster moves to make. Logan Webb, the first one, was sent down to AAA, while Lorenzo Ordonez was called up from AAA to take McCutcheon's spot on the roster. He will be wearing number 21 at the big league level. Now, if we take a look at what our roster looks like currently, our rotation 1 to 5 is D Rod, and then four lefties in Robbie Ray, Tyler Skaggs, Hinjin Ryu, and Jay Groom. That means that Braylon Marquez has been pitched, has been moved to the bullpen in the long reliever spot along with Sean Anderson. And taking a look at the lineup now against right handers, Justin Turner moves the first base, which means Fuente is back to being the bench as the first bat off the bench. And Devin Travis is hitting sixth and playing third, just like he is against lefties, hitting sixth and playing third. As far as the numbers the new players are wearing, Devin Travis is not going to be wearing number 29 because that is Braylon Marquez's number for us, and Devin Travis wore number 8 when he was at Florida State, so that is what he's going to be wearing for us, while Robbie Ray will continue wearing number 38 because that was just Tyler Beatty's number previously. He's in AAA for us. When he comes up in September call-ups, he'll just get a different number. And since it is the trade deadline, that means we also have the ability to offer extensions to some of our players, and we took advantage of that. At first, we tried to give Jason Tupman a four-year extension, but he did not want to sign a contract at that length. So we gave him a three-year extension instead, worth $850,000 per year. We also re-signed Tanner Scott, who has developed into an insane reliever for us this season. He signed a two-year, $7 million extension. While Jock Peterson is still to be decided, we're going to wait till the offseason to make a decision on him. And now let's hop into some post-deadline games. The Snakes are on a plane as they travel out to San Francisco to take on the Giants as the D-backs are in town. Artie Lewicki, the man who replaced Robbie Ray in the rotation, is on the hill for the D-backs, while Robbie Ray is on the hill for the Giants, making his second start for San Francisco. Take a look at the Giants lineup 1-2-9, as well as the D-backs lineup 1-2-9. Leading things off is the former giant Franklin Barreto against his former team, and he would be struck out by the man he was traded for in Robbie Ray for the first strikeout of the game. After that, it's Andrew McCutcheon, the other former giant, and he's also going to go down swinging. He falls victim to the backdoor slider. Move things on to the bottom of the second. Aaron Altair is going to hit one back up the gut for a base knock, so he's on first to lead off the bottom of the second. Next batter up was Justin Turner, hits a missile off the wall in left field, Altair's going first to third, Turner is in second with a double, so it's runners in scoring position for Devin Travis, the newly acquired bat for the Blue Jays, who's going to fight off an inside pitch, bloop it over the head of the second baseman, a run comes in and the Giants have a 1-0 lead. Top of the third now, three pitch strikeout on Greg Bird on the slider. After that, it brings up Carson Kelly, the catcher. Three-pitch strikeout to him. And then it would bring up the pitcher in Lewicki. Three-pitch strikeout to him. That's an immaculate inning for Robbie Ray. What a way to come in and dominate his former team. On to the bottom of the third now. Javi Baez at the dish. Hits a ball to right center field. And that gets down into the gap that's up against the wall. Bias has got some fleet feet, and he uses them to get into third base with a triple. So he's in scoring position with two outs as Aaron Altair then hits a ground ball to third base. Eduardo Escobar's throw is going to go over the head of the first baseman, Bird. So Baez comes in to score. Altair's now at second base. And Justin Turner is also going to go into the right center field gap. This one's a bit more to center field, though. But Turner is going to make it count as he's rounding second, heading into third. The throw down is offline. Turner has himself a triple. Then Joey Bart comes to the plate, pokes a ball through the left side of the infield field and makes it a 4-0 lead for the Giants. Devin Travis now at the plate, hits the ball into left field. He's got a multi-hit game for the Giants. So runners on first and second, two outs. Peter Mooney then hits a rocket up the middle. Bart's going to round third. They're sending him home and the throw to the plate from Marte guns him, cuts him down to the plate. It's still a 4-0 game. On to the top of the fourth, it's Barreto going down swinging for the first down. 
After that, it's Kettle Marte, and he's also going to go down, but he's going to go down looking on the backdoor slider. And then it brings up the former Giant in McCutcheon, who whiffs through the fastball up and in, strikes out the side. Robbie Ray does yet again in this game. He was filthy all game long. Top of the fifth, though, as the D-backs sort of start to figure him out as they hit a ball into right center field. That's Joey Rickard. He's going to go all the way to third base with a triple for the D-backs. So he is very much in scoring position with one out. Brings up Eduardo Escobar. He's going to hit a ball up the middle. A little chopper. Mooney makes the play to get Escobar, but the run does come into score. It's now a 4-1 game. Top of the seventh, McCutcheon strikes out for the third time this ball game. And then with one out, it brings up Wilmer Flores with a rocket down the left field line. That's going to get into the corner. Ordonia is now in left field. Gets it into the cutoff man. So runner on second base for Eduardo Escobar now. And he's going to send a ball at the left center field. That's going to graze over the fence for a two-run shot. And we've got ourselves a ball game now. It's a 4-3 game as they left Ray in a bit too long. TJ Trejo then comes on to replace him. And he would get an easy pop-up from Greg. Bird. It was quite deep, but it didn't really have a chance on doing anything as that remains in the air for too long. Tanner Scott comes on for the eighth inning, and the first batter he's facing, Carson Kelly, whiffs through a sinker. After that, it is Jake Lamb at the plate, and he's going to go down looking on a fastball up and away. And then for the third out of the inning, it's Franklin Barreto striking out on the slider. A 1 2 3 inning for Tanner Scott strikes out the side. Noe Ramirez comes on in the bottom of the eighth for the D-backs. First batter in the inning is Devin Travis, and he is going to have a three-hit day as he sends this one out to right center field. Marte cannot make the play, and Travis has himself a triple. The third triple of the day for the Giants. So a runner on third with nobody out is then Peter Mooney, the five foot six hit machine, continues to do what he does, gets a hit, blue pit, drives in Travis. It's now a six to three ball game or a 5-3 ball game, I should say. And Reyes Moronsuk then comes on in the ninth looking for the save, and he works a 1-2-3 inning for that save as the Giants win this one 5-3 over the lowly D-backs here at home. Robbie Ray was flat out filthy on today's game. Six and a two thirds innings, and he struck out 13 batters, only gave up four hits, did give up three runs because they left him in a bit too long in that seventh inning. But 13 strikeouts is the thing that stands out there. The man leads the National League in strikeouts, and we have seen why, as he is filthy. Justin Turner on the day had a triple and a double. Devin Travis, a three hit game with two singles and a triple. Javi Baez had a triple. Aaron Altair had a two for four day in this 5-3 win for the Giants. The Giants have been playing so well as of recently that they have flipped what the top of the NL West looks like as the Dodgers are now four games behind the Giants. And they have just gotten their backup catcher back in Matt Wieters as he has returned from his broken ankle. He's now the backup catcher again as Chase Numata was sent back down to AAA. And while we are taking a look at the stats, it is worth mentioning that Justin Turner has been absolutely in fuego. As of recently, a 9-10 OPS, he has been tearing it up, a big reason why the Giants are currently as hot as they are. While Peter Mooney, also a big reason, he has been just as hot as Turner. He has his OPS up to 805 after he got off to that very slow start where he had the sub-700 OPS. Well, it's very disappointing to see that Jock Peterson has very much struggled as of recently. His OPS was in the mid-800s. It has dropped down to 788. Definitely not what you like to see from him. Now on to a game against the Cincinnati Reds here at Oracle Park. The Reds have an absolutely stacked ball club, and they're going to be sending out the young right-hander Hunter Green, making his 22nd start of the year, as he is opposed by Derek Rodriguez, making his 24th start of the year for the Giants. Speaking of the Giants, there's their lineup 1-2-9. Take a look at the Reds' opposing lineup as well. We'll start things off top of the fourth after a whole bunch of nothing happened in innings 1 through 3. And here's Bo Bichette hitting a ball into foul territory. Territory, Elliot Ramos reaching into the crowd and robbing that one. And then for the second out would be Joey Votto grounding out over to Devin Travis at third base. And then for the third out of the inning, it's Scooter Jeanette grounding one over to Javi Baez. A 1-2-3 inning from Derek Rodriguez. Bottom of the fourth as... Green also had a 1-2-3 inning. The highlight of it was this diving stop from Bo Bichette and then the fire from the outfield grass to get the speedy Baez at first base. On to the top of the fifth now, where 
Eugenio Suarez is going to go down on the curveball, drop third strike, they toss over to first, then Yasiel Puig is also going down on that nasty curveball that D-Rod has, but then with two outs, there's going to be a couple blue pits, the first one there from Nick Senzel just fights one off through the right side of the infield, and then Ramos gets jammed and bloops one into right field. They do not test Ramos's arm in right field, though. So runners on first and second with two outs, and Taylor Trammell hits a high arcing fly ball here. Looks like it's going to hit off the top of the wall. That's where Ramos is set up, but instead it bounces out for a home run, a three-run shot. Trammell's seventh of the season makes it a 3 nothing lead for the Reds. Then in the bottom of the the fifth, Joey Bart hits a ball down the left field line. Trammell gets to it so quick, it's only a single for Bart. So he's on first, brings up Devin Travis, who then hits a ground ball to the, to, uh, the third baseman that's knocked down by Suarez. They get the lead runner, so Travis reaches on the fielder's choice. Gilberto Fuentes then comes on to pinch hit with two bats, as he would bloop one over the head of Jeanette at second base. Travis is going first to third. Fuentes moves up the second on the throw. So second and third, two outs, brings up the leadoff man in Ramos. He draws himself a walk. So it's bases juiced for the man who has been on fire as of recently in Justin Turner, but he's not gonna get the job done here as he pops us one up the shallow left field for out number three. Rysel Iglesias comes on the top of the seventh, works one quick out, and then Wilson Ramos connects on a pitch, sends it into the left field seats. That's a solo shot, and now the Reds are up in this game 4 nothing. not where the Giants want to be. Bottom of the eighth now, Lorenzo Ordonez comes on to pinch hit. 1-1 one, one count from Hunter Green as Ordonez sends it out to right center field. The play is not going to be made by Senzel, and Ordonez has got those fleet feet, so he's able to get into third base no prop Lamo with a triple. Then it would bring up Elliot Ramos, who hits a ball to deep right center field, but it's not going to get down in the gap. It is caught, but it is plenty deep enough to have the runner Ordonez tag up, and the Giants are now on the board. With one out, it's now Justin Turner at the plate. He draws himself a walk. So that would be the end of Hunter Green's day. Matt Bowman then comes on, and the first batter he's facing is Baez, who hits a ball right to the shortstop, Bichette, and he turns it into an inning-ending 6-4-3 double play. We're now on to the ninth, where the closer, Amir Garrett, comes on. He's a lefty, so the lefty killer, Stort Fairchild, comes on to pinch hit, and he would get a pitch to hit, but he pops it up, just gets a bit under it, pops up in the left center field. That's a can of corn for Senzel. Yamada then comes on to pinch hit for Jock Peterson, and he would hit a ball, he would hit a ball hard, but right at the left fielder, Trammel for out number two, and then Joey Bart goes down swinging on the back foot slider, as it's a 1-2-3 inning worked by Amir Garrett and the Reds come out on top over the Giants as it seems like the Reds are just this team's kryptonite this season as they have not been able to beat them all year long. Wilson Ramos gets player of the game honors just like he was in the previous game showcased against the Reds early season. He goes 2 for 3 in the day with a solo shot, also a bloop single. Taylor Trammell's only hit was a 3-run shot that puts the Reds in the lead and they never looked back. So with that being said, that is going to wrap things up here for this edition of the San Francisco Giants franchise. I've been your host, Jerseyborn, and I am saying, people who think that Major League hitters should lay down bunts and get little dinky singles against the shift truly don't understand why teams are shifting in the first place. And that's not even acknowledging the fact that the majority of people who complain about stuff like that are people who didn't even like baseball before shifts became this prevalent. And now they're complaining as if shifts have ruined their childhood game and their life is ruined because of it. Truly the smoothest of brains.